So my first touch will be actually writing the script. So that's the what we are here all together. So my first script will be uh, let it be the hello bash. But before we go actually for writing the script, we have to decide, or you have to decide, which uh, editor you will use to write your scripts. So you have a number of options over here. There is a very popular, like Emacs. If you are familiar with the Emacs, go with it. There is very popular another one, EIM. It's also the text editor, which is uh, used by many people uh, on Linux. But both of them and Emacs, well, let me put it this way. So it's the Emacs and VIM. They are quite complicated and they require some kind of passion and experience. So when you are becoming the experienced users of Linux shell, you will definitely you will pick up one of them. For less experienced people, we suggest Nano. Let me run it and let me show how it works. I would suggest if you are not really experienced with the any kind of text editor on the Linux shell, then use that one. It will it the most intuitive, I would say. So when you type here something, type something, and then you want to exit the code, then you just press Control X. It will ask you, do you want to save it? Yes, and then it will ask you where you want to save it. And for instance, I want to save it to the hello bash. Okay, and I'm now in my demo space and I've got this hello bash dot shell. So that's the first script I have created. It's not really a script. I have demonstrated how to use nano. It's up to you. Which one do you prefer? I prefer VIM, and during this course I will use mostly VIM simply because it have uh, it has really good highlightings. It has, and I'm just way more experienced with this one. So let's try to. I will delete this line, and then let's try to write your first script. Your first script ever will come with this cryptic line. What it stands for, it's called the shebang. Shebang is nothing else than the, uh, it says to the program which run is, which interpreter supposed to be used. So bin bash is path to the binary, which will run the code which comes after. And so, and this, uh, a number sign and exclamation mark is a special two special characters which are widely used in Linux, uh, especially for the uh, which are used in Linux for the shebang mark. So in the same way, when you will be writing some Python script, you will be putting the shebang with the USRB in Python. If you will be writing some TCL or some other something which is just normal text, so that will come uh, into use as well. And the next. Let's actually output something, which is the hello bash. Uh, let it be even correct way. So now I'm done. I'm also able to put here uh, some comment. So let me say that it prints hello bash. Uh, that's that much you're supposed to know. So uh, then another one about syntax. So this is the comment. This is the shebang. That's the comment uh, which comes and which outputs the uh, hello bash. And then you can continue the string, for instance, to another line. So just put the uh, backslash like this one. If the line is pretty long and you want to make it more or less compact, compact and readable, you can use it. We don't need it right now, but just this part of the syntax. And then also the indentation. If you are a, a Python user so that you know that you need to, all these strings, especially uh, all these uh, blocks, they're supposed to be indented. But in case of bash, it doesn't really matter. 
So you can put another one command over here like this. Hello bash again. Okay, typings. Hello bash again. And that will be completely okay. You can do it even more compact. You can do the uh, with the delimiter. It will be also okay. You can do it this way. It will be also okay from the bash syntax point of view. So bash will not tell you anything about your syntax uh, about all these lines. So the empty lines that will not be uh, that will be just omitted as usually. Uh, and this is pretty much anything else. Uh, this is pretty much it that you should supposed to know about the syntax. So we will come later to the blocks. We will come later to the if statements and this uh, for loops, etc., and the other stuff. And you will see that you actually I will use in indentation over there, but it's only for the sake of readability. So let's try to run the script. If I do it like this. First command not found. Okay, so what happens over here? You can see that actually from the Linux perspective, uh, you can check out what kind of permissions the script has. So even if it's the already something with the dot shell, actually the dot shell is nothing else than just the uh, uh, extension. So extension uh, can be any. Bash script is not supposed to use dot shell. I'm just using dot shell because I wanna uh, make sure I wanna make sure for myself that I know that that's the shell script and it's written by myself. So, but only uh, because of its text, it's supposed to be executable. This execution bit over here it's missing. So there should be X. You remember from the previous course that should be it's readable, it's writable, but it's not executable. So what first I need to do is I need to change mode and say that my script is going to be executable. Hello bash plus x. So now you see I've got this plus x. Fine, it's already executable. If I still try to do it like this, hello bash nothing is found why it's because the bash is actually to not pick up your local files by default so it expects that your binaries even including the including the uh, scripts they are somewhere in the directory so you have to call them explicitly and calling explicitly saying that i need to put the path uh, in my case, it's just enough if I put dot and the slash, that means that in current directory, take the hello bash and execute this. So now it has happened. Well, this is our first step. And now what's next? Uh, next, I would like to make, uh, to use the good practice uh, and create a directory where I will be putting all my stuff and I'm not only will be keeping all my stuff in there, I will also make it this way that bash will actually look at my directory when I want to execute something and will be executed, uh, the script will be executed without this dot slash. So how to do that? I suggest that you run make dir in your directory where you are, uh, bin, we will come to this uh, during the exercise. So I have already been directory. So, but when you will need to run it just like this. So I have already been directory. I have even a couple of scripts over there, over there, which we will be later used, no, just one. But then let me move that bash. No, hello bash only. Hello bash over here. So now I have it in bin. And it's not yet enough. So what next I need to do? I need to modify the environment variable called path. So if you look at the echo path, there should be some directories where your bash will be looking at 
to find the binary that we are trying to run. So even the bash itself, it's somewhere in the directory. So in our case, it's bin bash. Yeah. But you see that uh, this bin bash has been already added uh, by default. Uh, so it's already part of the default. So it's bash user, bin bash, etc. So it's part of the default and it's always there. But uh, our local bin has never been added to the path. Path is modifiable. So you can edit this and let me do it this way. So I can use the command export. So now don't go deeply into this, just type, uh, just, uh, you will just use it as is when we are, we'll be doing the exercise. Export, and I will say that export my path and do the changes. So add to my path something which is called demo space beam. What will happen after? Let's see. If I take a look at the bash at the path once again, you will see that actually my directory where I have my uh, scripts has been added to that path and now it's executable. Now, if I will run something like hello bash, it will immediately be executed as next. And I can tell you even more. This uh, command type minus a and this is the utility uh, within the linux which can always ready to tell you which binary will be run when you type with with no absolute path so in this case it tells me exactly that hello bash is like this okay then what else i what was about to tell you uh, so the execution summary, a uh, kind of executive summary is that you you create the you create the file, you make sure that shebang is there, then you don't really care much about syntax. Uh, that's a takeaway message. Then if case that should be enough already to get your runny, but then in case if you want to be uh, efficient uh, and productive so you will organize your own bin directory and you will add it and export later to the path variable so that information should be pretty much enough to go for the exercise uh, to go for the exercise let it be toast exercise because you are still will be playing with the uh, editor so let us say that it's going to be 10 minutes yeah and now it's 12 22 so that we will go till 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 where was the exercise down we will go the first exercise till 32 of your local time so i put here xx because i'm expect that some people are not from Finland so some people are from somewhere else so it's not uh no sorry the vice versa 30 or let it be free so now it's your time you try it you may succeed you may not not a big trouble just ask your question online and when you're done please put something like this over here or if you see that it's come, time is coming, so press it over here, like this. Or if you still don't really care, you're just listening, uh, write it over here. Okay, so now 10 minutes is yours, and let's go. I'll mute myself for a second. Continue. Can you hear me? Hopefully, yes. I mean, if you can't hear me, then just tell me. Okay, so the first uh, exercise has been already done, has been already over, so your hands already dirty. 
which is good for me and good for you. So welcome to the world of the bash, even though that some of you have already written some scripts. Actually, I want to, uh, even if this hello world is not so practical, uh, but uh, let me write uh, another script. Uh, let me go back to the prompt. So if you are a Python user, for instance, then you may think, okay, I'm writing Python and I have a kind of sandbox where you can test it easily with uh, just writing the command. And then for instance, you do something like that and you just quiet. Yeah, that's fairly easy. And you can think about how to do that with the bash. Well, you're already actually there. So this command line that you have, it is already the kind of uh, ready to go prompt for you. You don't need to put bash. You don't need to put anything else. You just put your commands and everything what you want, you can put over here. So in this way, uh, bash is adapted for the uh, interactive usage. So scripting is just the kind of uh, fancy addition and the kind of value added to the bash but bash itself is mostly about prompt and most of the commands you can run as is just from the prompt and this is what we will use also over here so some of the statements some of the expressions i will just test it from the command line before actually adding them to the uh, to the uh, to the script so scripts are made mostly for the sake of automation. Scripts are made mostly uh, for the sake of if you have a long list of comments, you don't remember all these parameters and you want to make out of this uh, uh, complex construct of some utilities, uh, you want to make out of them some kind of one single comment. So this is what for you are using the scripts. Uh, again, and see that, for instance, uh, one example that, that I will show you. So, uh, for instance, I will be doing this uh, tar archive in time to time of my demo space and saying that I want to compress it. And my, my file name, which I want to so my archive name, will be like demo space tar .gz. So it's the quite common in Linux, uh, tar utility and the GZ compression. And then I am saying that actually my directory, which I want to compress, that's the demo space. So I can just put one single dot, but for the sake of readability, uh, let me put it this way, demo space. So I'm doing the compression. So these are warnings, the I just, you can skip them. So now you see that I have got the file over here. I'm not exactly kind of, I'm not exactly, I'm, it's my colleague over here. So I'm not exactly uh, uh, maybe wants to do it time to time. So what I want to make over here that I want to put it to the bin and make a one single command, shorter one and easier to one, and which will serve us for the whole course so we will do the modification to that so let me call it tar me for instance my shell script will be starting once again with the bin bash with the shebang and then i'm putting here my command over here and as a good practice remember to have some kind of comments and some kind of revision a history so what you've done and when you have done so i'm <clears throat> saying yet nothing you about the git over here uh, but i'm encouraging you in the your entire life after all use git for a kind of uh, versioning uh, here we just uh, skip this part and make it uh, kind of more simple and the git part will be covered already by the code, code refiner when you will be there. So, but here I'm archive my directory. So that's the easy way. And then let's try once again, change mode plus X. And what's good about this, because the, 
if you put harmi.shell, you will see that actually it's immediately found from my bin directory because my bin directory has been already added to the path and I don't need to do anything else if I decide to go and make another archive. I just run tarmi and that's it. We will use this further to develop a bigger script. So this will be part of our exercises. It will be part of our demonstrations overall. So this is why I did this uh, right over here. Okay. Sorry. Variables. So definitely what you want to know about the uh, when you start programming something, how to use the variables within your code. So the variables is nothing really specific. So let me uh, start doing this uh, uh, in the prompt, and then we will move these variables to the file. So variables, it can be any. Mm. It can be just the uh, uh, letters and digits, and then minus it could be hash so there is quite a quite a number of the there is some special characters if you go to the variables a section of this uh, uh, of this uh, material so you will see there were somewhere a list of special characters yeah sure it's here it's quoting and substitution so you these characters cannot be really used in the variables because they are part of the uh, other syntax but then everything else can be used as a variable and so let's see what else so variables uh, for instance assigning the variables you just put the equal sign and say my first bash variable it will be like this it's already there so in order to call that variable it's enough if you put the dollar sign in the front of the name and so you can see echo will give you the output of that variable in the same way you can use this dollar sign variable name within any commands or within any part of your script it's just will be calling and it will be returning you the value of that variable a variable there is no kind of definition there is no point uh, there is no strings uh, booleans integers etc so all the variables in inside of the bash they will be used as is if you are doing this as a string they will be interpreted as a string if you are doing it something else it, it will be if you make the integer summation within the integer expressions then it will be interpreted as an integer etc so uh, bash is really flexible in terms of variables so even if you are not defined it but you still call it it will just return you the empty variable and not the error so be careful about this and this is actually quite common error is that you are misprinting or mistyping the variable and you call it uh, let's say and then you are surprised that okay nothing comes out actually bash doesn't really take care about it it's, it relies on your and it still thinks that you are making your scripts pretty much robust and checking whether the variable is empty or is it does it exist at all so where here it comes the place where the quotation also matters let me open once again the hello script and i will use it as a sandbox for this kind of situation so for instance i want to assign a variable and let it be let it be let it be some text and then if i go to the echo and want to output that variable that should be enough but then if uh, my syntax or if my sentence is more or less complex so if i want to say that var is okay i have to use already well not exactly I have to use with the echo but let's assume that we have to also also with the echo so i have to use the quotations and here where it comes the difference between the quotes so the echo with the single quotes will produce you exactly 
the sentence you have it within the single quotes. It will not open for you the variables, but the double quote quotation will do it for you. So here, take a note, quotation matters. So then there are a few other things. Uh, for instance, um, mm, uh, less complicated uh, cases uh, So let's try it out. So now we will actually, we can use it. We can comment this once, just we don't need it. And use it as a sandbox. So it has been already added to the bin. It's executable by default. So, and now you can see the difference. The first line has been using the single quotes and the second line was using the double quotes. So yes, take it take it into account. Along with the variables which you kind of uh, create yourself and define yourself, there is a bunch of other variables which are, have been already created for you by the environments, by the bash itself and by the Linux itself. You will be surprised if you uh, type this print and you will see a long list of all kind of uh, predefined variables. Some of them read only, some of them are changeable, but most of them you don't really need to touch, except except uh, with something which is uh, kind of, I don't know. Um, well, I don't know even the exact example when you need to change the uh, variables. Well, sometimes you end up changing this. For instance, I've been doing this for the script, which is uh, uh, over here. But anyway, anyway, so, and a few examples that you may find useful. The first one was already mentioned. That's the path. And that gives you the list of the directories where bash will be looking for the binaries when you type it without the absolute path then home it's exactly your home directory then for instance uh, shell that's exactly your bash shell which is defined for you so i said nothing about the other shells but that's probably the uh, good point to do that so bash is just one of the shells we were talking about this of this about this on the first part of the course and there are other ones which are perfectly fine to use like a z shell or something else like corn shell it's up to you but this uh, course is focused on the bash mainly because bash is the most popular nowadays so and this is also the shell number one for us because we are running the big cluster installation triton and so on triton we expect everyone used to bash so this is one and because i'm part of the team so we pushing people to use bash and the whole course is about bash how to change your shell it's the change shell command if you want to do it on your local uh, desktop it's easy to do you do the change shell and you just put the bin bash and your next session will be started with the bin bash okay said that i think we can now jump to the exercise number two so i call it variables and i will give you another 10 minutes uh, to do what first you need to adapt your hello bash shell and assign the hello bash to a variable and print the variable to the output so i've done it already for you uh during the demo so now try to use your memory don't look yet at my hello bash but try to use your memory and uh, try it out then the next one which haven't been done yet but now you have to implement it on your own so your script which will be placed also in the bin and call it whatever you want. I call it here print vars, which will print for us the home shell and path one per line. So now time is yours and we're 48. So let's say that already 49. So that let's go this way. We will have both 
uh, and the how to call it break. Uh, let's call it joint break and exercise sessions. So we will come back to the screen at thirteen zero nine. But so ten minutes for the break, ten minutes for the exercise, and you decide how you use in which order. I mute myself and I will add it to the Okay, let's get back to the to the material. So my next stop was uh, actually tell you even more about the uh, about the um, variables. This is something which is very specific to the bash. This is what you probably will not see in most of the languages. So when you can do something with the variables on the fly, the constructions looks like this. So curly brackets, uh, column, and then some kind of cryptic syntax which will do something to the variable as a string. So what can be done with the string? So you can make it, for instance, uh, all capital, all small. You can replace some part of the some part of the variable value. Then you can, for instance, check whether this variable exists or not. You can redesign it, uh, re redefine it with some default value. So um, there are quite a number of things that you can can be done. So I'm not really put everything to this material. So, but the selected of them are over here. So you can check them out. And then on top of that, you can also actually forgot to sell. So if you're ever uh, thinking about syntax, if you're ever thinking about some particular commands which have been used within this uh, bash scripting. So all the internal logic is written in the bash manual. If you go to the for the man bash, you will see the very long, I mean, it's at least 100 pages if you will print it out in their normal font size. But you will see all the details about what else and what kind of uh, what kind of options, what kind of arguments are given by every single uh, command which I use internally, internally, and then what all these magics, all these extensions, all these uh, practical aspects of the bash programming. So the magic I was thinking about is that, for instance, uh, I know that the echo var already exists because I have it designed. Actually, let me tell you one thing, you can unset the variable. So if you don't really want this variable to exist anymore, it will exist there as long as your session is there. So, but if you don't want to exist it anymore, you just can do it with the unset var. And now if you see that I'm trying to address var, it doesn't exist anymore. Bash is not complaining anything about calling the undefined variable, but it just returned the empty line which is fine, which is not an error, that's just a feature. So let me say that I want still to define it somehow. <clears throat> and for instance, it's still undefined, but I want to check it out. So my uh, approach would be here, checking out, for instance, this one, is uh, pretty simple for the sake of checking out the existence of this variable. So you see what will happen. So echo or bash on behind of echo, it will check that variable exists or not, and then give this error message which comes after the question mark. So here I'm saying that bash var not defined. So if you use it within the script or within your function, it's perfectly enough to make your script more or less robust. There is another one option. If you, instead of exclamation mark, you put something like equal, that would check that variable. And if it does not exist, it will assign some special value, uh, some default value. It could be anything. Uh, then just put default value. Oh, it's up to you what do you decide to do this. 
But then if you see from now on, echo var, even as it has been uh, defined, undefined over here, you see, you remember that, now it's already the has the value. And the thing to remember, with all these major constructions, with all these curly brackets, uh, this do uh, column and the equal sign is the only operator which actually does something to the variable. It changes it. It assigns the default value or another value which you just put it over here. All the rest, all the rest which are listed here as the selected operators, they do really nothing to the variable. They just simply uh, extract it or they modify it on the fly and put it to the line, to the online, uh, give it to the output, print it to the output, but then they actually do nothing with the variable itself. So a variable stays as is. So let me, let me do the example, for instance, here, I'm grabbing the F path. So I'm saying that that's my, path to the file and I'm naming that vari variable accordingly. So if you take a look at the F path, it's pretty much like that. Yeah. So what I want to say that I want to first get the path. For instance, here, the cryptic says that, okay, return me everything what is uh, what is before the first uh, the, the the last uh, before the before the last uh, slash so oh actually everything except uh, what is after the last slash so now i'm getting the name of the file actually so you see that i've got rid of this one while the file itself i mean the f path has not been modified it's only the modification which has happened on the fly and it has been output to the script. In order to make it modified, actually you have to reassign it to another variable. So if I assign it to another variable and say, let's call it fpath2, now it's gonna be already something which will be remember it which will be saved to the memory and which will be part of the, part of your global space. So you see. And then for instance, another example, if I want to keep running this F path thing and want to return only the path. So that's the another approach. So I'm not going any more deeply into this i want you actually to go this deeper into this thing so learn this section and let's try it let's say that we go for another 10 minutes playing with this variable magix so what i want you to try i wanted to try in this construct where you have the variable name and then the curly brackets and then something after the variable name lay it on your own or uh, actually, if you will be ready, here is my, oh, did I put it over here already? So, uh, here is my uh, suggestion for you. So you pick up once again, your hello bash and you change it uh, in such a way that, uh, uh this variable hello bash uh, will be printed in capitals. That's the first. And the second one is that you will wrap once again that uh, F path variable in the way you want to, but I mean, you just copy paste from the course material and make your script to return file name only without the full path and extension. So the hint over here is that I have said you previously over here, is that you will not be able to do it with one single iteration. You will have to do it with two iterations. And for that, you will have to save one variable uh, to another. So let's see how you will manage this to do. 
you will have now 10 maybe even 15 minutes because it's going to be quite uh, quite a challenge for you especially for the first time but then let's go so we will finish when at 13 25 Okay, we're gonna keep going. So let me demonstrate you with you techniques over here. So the first, I will also put it to the uh, the answers to this uh, both exercises uh, to both tasks of this exercise will be on the notes. But then first, let me go with demo. So quick demo for the first one echo. And then we were expecting some modifications to the VAR. So we need the curly brackets. And then we need to say what we want. So we put two hats over here. That should be enough. Let's see what we get out of this. So yeah, so you can see that actually the first one was the from the previous version of the script and the second one was already the first they said the other one so regarding the f path uh, plane so there was a request to do the get the only the archive that was somewhat complicated and complex and i do hope that at least some of you have got already some of this so let me grab this one and say that I go to the bin and I will create my new script. I will call it some kind of F path. And I will play with that. And I will say that it's gonna be bash once again. And let's see what can be done. So I am actually can use pretty much the variables uh, modifications, this magic from the from the uh, learning material. So, but here what I'm getting, I would get it only on the fly. I don't really want it on the fly. I want it to be another variable, but here I don't really care about the original F path. I can simply reassign it. In order to make the modification, not on the fly, but uh, save them to the uh, to the variable i can simply unsign it this way and you will see later that actually <clears throat> so let's say that i want to put the f path and i can say here that's the phase one it's going to be the f path part which will be i will take off everything which is behind this one uh this slash and so the only thing which will be left to me that's this one okay and now that's the moment where i can already if i don't care being out the what's the final result of left path this is where the moment Uh, where I can put something like this, but modify it a little bit. So let's say that here I put the comments just to simply here we get archive with extensions. Okay. You can check it out from the command line. I know that it's going to be like this already because I already checked. So I just put it to the to my script already directly. So now, uh -huh. so this block is over here. Now the next step, get archive out of. So now we have to get rid of this too. So how to do that is that we can say that, okay, we don't need dots. 
and we don't need anything out of these dots. Now the tricky thing, because of this uh, syntax, so this will allow me to get rid of the only the last one content of which comes after the dot. But what I want, I want the everything after the after the after the dot. So in this case, I will have to use the two percentages. So that was the complication over here, and that was kind of thing that you had to had to find it out from the from the manual page or just to try it to fit with that. Okay, now let's see what's going on. Change modes. Or let it be okay. Okay, it should be plus x. And now I'm ready to run F path. And so in the phase one, we got archive targ Z. And after the second one, we got the archive. So take a look once again. It's nowadays looking like this. So let me put it to the to the solution part. Where am I? 15 minutes functions. That's going to be the next one. Here is the So here is for everyone who wants to take a look at this later on. Okay, now we can, if any question, please ask. If something is yet unclear, so I can take rid of this one. And we just have actual the part which is, which we need. So saying that, I think I'm done with the variables and you know already pretty much a lot. So you know already how to use the variables, you know how to find them, how to call them. You should now by now know that the uh, variable can be undefined. And then you also know this uh, magics of this uh, bash variables, which you can do with the curly brackets and do some modifications on the fly in case you want to do this. So if you want to substitute this modified uh, modify variable and put it to the command line, so that's the way to do with the curly brackets. So now the next one I wanted to try is functions. Functions uh, as everywhere. It's just a piece of code, which uh, you can use repeatedly. Usually, I mean, if you know that within the same code, you can, you will use the same piece of, uh, uh, the same mm. snippets. So you can just put them somewhere else to the function and then use them uh, all the time within the code. This is quite normal. This is quite usually, and this is not an exclusion in, in terms of bash. Functions are there. The only difference, uh, the functionality of the functions is not really nothing. Is nothing really extraordinary. It's just piece of the code which will work will work in the normally global space. So you uh, basically you will have access to all the variables that you use within the script. You will have access to all the variables. Uh, the global space, that would mean that you have access to all the variables that you have uh, assigned it, uh, within the within the script itself. And then on top of that, every single modification of that variable that you do within the function will be seen to the end of the script. So just remember that. And this is uh, differs this uh, function's functionality from the other languages. On top of that, function do not really return result of the modification of this variable with the return command. It does have a return command, but return command does nothing except returning the exit code. The exit code, uh, this is something which is, uh, I already mentioned it once. And so every time, every time when you run some command, for instance, if I run something like echo, test, you can expect that this command has returned some exit code. Uh, 
the exit code is saved in the variable called uh, dollar sign and then the question mark okay and in case of bash if it's zero that means that the action has succeeded and if it's non-zero one two three any other digit so it means that the action actually has failed so this thing to remember and to take a note if you are doing so now let me get back to the functions what i suggest to do is that i suggest to organize the file which i would call functions surprise surprise you don't need to put dot shell or anything like this it can be just functions another one surprise that within this functions uh, those the, the file where you want to define it you don't really need to push the uh, put the shebang i will tell you i will show you how to call the functions later on but just for now it's enough if you just do uh, do it without it so my first example will be for you is the usage of your space so let me first get out of this and copy paste the command from the material you can do it on the same way so what the command does it it shows you the files in this current directory and sort them out by the size so in my situation i'm trying to look at the all the files including the hidden ones so the hidden ones as you remember from the previous uh, uh, course material uh, that's the one which start with the dot so by default if you don't address them specifically uh, no one of the commands neither ls nor other commands will see them so this is why they are called hidden even if they are not really hidden in such a way so but you must say explicitly and this is the expression how to address all the hidden files in the current directory so because no one of the hidden files is found this usage gives me the warning that it, nothing can be accessed it's completely okay it can be ignored but the other files are over here so i have tested this command and now i want to make a space usage out of this one so let me write a function Or did I have a functions? Okay, I probably haven't functions. I haven't, uh, yeah, that was empty. So now let me go into that function and put the body of my function and then put the actually name, etc. around. So the way you write the function, you open the curly brackets. So you put the name of the function. It should have this um, uh, brackets, round brackets, parentheses, and then you put the curly brackets, and then you put actually the name of the uh, the name of the uh, the command itself. So now it has been defined. Now it's in the file, and the function file does not need even the execution bit. So if you look at the ls minus l functions, you will see that it's nothing else than just normal text file. How to source it? So you can go to, uh, you can just grab that file functions and type source, and you will have these functions part of your environment. How to check it? Again, you can use type minus a, and see that what kind of uh, function is behind the space usage and you will get the list so there are two signs here first space usage is part of your environment by now and second sign that uh, you can see that actually it's supposed to work right away so by now because it's your part of your environment you can run it pretty much like any other binary so now you can see that after running space usage there will be this kind of uh, list exactly that i would have get out of this uh, command but 
this command is now has a kind of a nickname space usage. The name you come with is just up to you. And actually Bash doesn't really care as except that you are if you are not trying to rename some real um some real binaries. And even for that there is medicine. I don't tell you yet anything about this, but uh, for this there is a medicine as well. So let me say that I'm pretty happy with this already one, but there is something else that can be used with the functions. Functions can accept the um, input parameters. And input parameters, so if, uh, let me say that if I call space usage like this, and then if I say some arguments, number one, arguments, number two, arguments, number three, and so on, they will immediately be within my function, they will be immediately recognized as dollar one, dollar, where is dollar, dollar two, dollar three, etc. And we can use it. Okay, so let's say that we're expecting some input arguments, input parameters. And let's say that my space function will be actually expecting a directory so that I don't really go and check the current one, but I can check any one. Now what to do? Now I know that my directory is going to be like this, yeah? And so what kind of uh, what kind of thing I can implement over here? So I can say that everything within this directory like this, or even more, I can say that everything within this directory will be checked. It's already a good progress. So we've got already something to solve. But in case, in case, I want to make sure that actually this directory is provided, how to check it. And here where we can use our magic variables. And so we can implement it in a way that, okay, I keep it like this, but I put my curly brackets and I use this operator, which will say if it's equal, if this one is not defined, then let it be my current directory. Current directory in the bash notations is dot. So in the same way I can do it over here. If one is not defined, then I want to say that let it be dot. Now we are good enough to go with the new space usage. So now we already have created pretty robust um, code. Let me check it once again. Was it the minus or was it the... Yeah. Ah, okay. So here I'm doing one thing. So I don't want to reassign it, but I want to return it. So I'm using the minus operator. You see what's the difference? With the equal, with the equal, I would reassign it. So I don't really want to change and I will not be able to change this... Um, special variable dollar one but with the minus i will be able to return the dot without changing the variable itself that's the difference okay now we are pretty much robust and now we can even put again return the space usage uh well return the space usage with disk usage command. Now let's try. Now we need to source it once again. Functions. Now let's try type once again. Now you see that my script function, which is now part of my environment, has been modified. And now let's see how it works. First, I will use it with some variable. So I want to, for instance, check the my demo space okay let's see it works so once again this warning is just about the dot files you can 
simply ignore this. And then if I put no parameter, what it do for me? Okay, now I can see that actually it's trying to do it the same way like this. So which is pretty much what I have expected out of this function. Say it again. Now you have written the first uh, function which can be used then within the code. So how to do that? Uh, let's say that I want to... I will demonstrate it for the sake of demonstration over here. So now let me do the kind of dummy file. Let me copy functions to some space, whatever, space.shell. So I do it only for the sake of demonstration how to call the function within the code. So I'm now looking at the space. Here, I already need this shebang because I am doing the actual scripting. And so again, in the previous file, which was called functions, I was only defining the function, was not executing them. In this situation, I want to define it first and execute it after. So, and that's the way to space usage. And then even if I put some arguments, I can put the argument right away, space usage. And then for instance, let it be my home. Yeah, like that. Let's see what it gives us. Or oh, I can do it with the more readable format so I can give it with the home. So let's see what we will get. Again, we will have to add the execution bit. And then because we are already in the bin, we don't need anything else. Space shell. So yeah, pretty much works. Okay. So now you've got also the idea of how to call the function within the uh, script. And again, if you are kind of uh, lost and you you still can go to the bin and you can check it from here and see what's going on. So I don't really steal all this uh, piece of course from you so you have access to them. So what else I wanted to tell you about the... Uh, um, there are also options how to use the space uh, within these functions, how to use them uh, with the local variables. We don't really want to check it out. Uh, one thing that I wanted to introduce you, another one uh, beneficial uh, thing, part of the syntax, which is called the common substitution. So let me uh, say that I want to define a function. I want to call this function me, okay? So what I'm doing right here, while defining this function, I'm actually putting to the command line, not the command itself, but the outputs of this command into one single line. So command line substitution means that uh, you actually want to substitute the output of that command into some part of the code, into some part of the other command that you're typing. It's quite useful. You will see it uh, in the further examples that we will uh, run. And now just one single to show you how it works. So I have created it. So I have it added to the functions. And now I can, once again, with the type minus a, see that my function has been added. And if I run it, you can now see, uh, okay, host name is not found. I didn't check it, host name. minus s strange well whatever so ah okay actually 
I know the I know the problem over here. So it's good that we've got this error message. So what has happened just now? Again, this construction where you have the round brackets and the sign uh, dollar sign at the very beginning, it gives you the output of the command and it just prints it to the prompt. So for instance, I want to check ID. Yeah, and I want to check ID with the UN. So I'm just checking my username, basically. If I do it like this, it's completely fine. It will return me the uh, uh, the the actual output of the command. But if I will try to do it like that, without substitution it to the code, without substitution it to the prompt, so I'm getting the error message. Why? Because bash in the ground it will execute this uh, command substitution it will put the output of the command substitution to the prompt and it will expect that it's going to be a name of the command which is not correct and so this is why you are getting the error now let me fix that functions and say that actually what i'm looking for is the echo so what i need i need to put them all together and then output it to the screen. So let's see what will happen. I have to source it once again. Now I expect that it has been fixed. Yes, now you see that I've got the perfect information about myself. Who am I? What's my group number? What's my uh, group? And then also the, what's my machine name? Cool. So once again, now you have at least two functions defined you know how to do it you know how to call it you know how to call it function both from the prompt and from the from within the uh, script and then on top of that you also got some impression how to use the command line substitutions oh i think we are we are done but not yet fully i still wanted to add you something with the script because i touched the common substitution and so what i wanted to do i have to i wanted to demonstrate you some other commands so uh, let me introduce you some practical usage well me function was also practical but this is even more practical uh, than it is so you remember that dark command, which uh, I used just with the uh, explicit, uh, saying the explicitly what's the name of the tar archive is going to be, and then saying explicitly uh, wh which exactly directory I wanted to, I wanted to archive. So here, what I'm doing in this command, let me explain that. So let me make it more readable here what i'm doing i'm using the common substitution for a good so first of all i'm using date let me say that i save this command for you without executing right away so i know what date will provide to me this format of the date will give me a year month and the day okay that's what i want then what i want else i want the current directory but i want to have a current directory only the actual name one so you remember we've done it with the variables now i introduce you another one way to do that you can use the built-in utility called base name or maybe it's not built in maybe it's external but anyway it's part of the system so now you see that i'm getting the bean so out of this one out of this nested common substitution so first of all the common substitution can be nested and bash understands this kind of syntax it's quite clever so you will get bin here you will get date and the rest will be just as normal okay let's try it and let's see what will happen That's correct. So we have created some files inside the directory that we are archiving. So tar was given this warning. And now you can see that actually we've got the tar archive, which is named bin and then the date. 
which is dynamically perfectly generated name, which can be used for the scripts. So my suggestion that we will use it right away. And actually we will go to this, what was star something, uh, tarmi. And we will use it actually not as a function, but we will use it as a command. Okay, so, so pretty good. We're already on the functions and I think we are ready yet for another 10 minutes exercise. So let me see, it's there. Or maybe even 15 minutes, simply because it may take you 15 minutes. So now what I want you, uh, this is the simple one. You can copy paste it as is. Just create the bin functions and make sure that space uj, usage in me both are there. And then on top of that, what I want you to ask is add yet another one function to that functions files and test it. So let it be called fast find function, just the FF. And what it's supposed to be, you provide with the fast find any search word, any. And it must return all the files and directories in the current folder, which name contains this word. And I suggest let it be case insensitive. So in case of find, you just put this minus I name. So basically just use this one, put the search word, the word. I mean, if you are not familiar with the find, you still have some time to try man find, or you can take a look at the uh, course material from the previous part. So you can find some examples of find usage over here and yeah let's say that we get 15 minutes because this is uh, i expected that you back to the functions and you will read something maybe more and then you'll write your first function and make it to work so 15 minutes so that means that we are back to the at 14:22. So we have left now already less than 20, 30 minutes to go. It's almost 32. So I see that less and less people are actually uh, in time with doing the exercises. So we will have a short also questionnaire at the end. Don't run away. We will ask how complicated was the material. So you will actually, your opinion will have an impact. So if you think that we are pretty decent for the intermediate level your replies are well warmly welcome if you think that it's too complicated or too intensive or etc your reply is even more welcome so i will try to adapt by tomorrow the material if we decide to do so so let's get back to the functions so the space usage and me actually the easiest probably was just to go to this uh uh, uh demo space which i have posted on my web page copy it from there and there you would get the ready to go functions so please do it if you haven't done yet so or if you were typing on your own then just consult the these functions that this syntax is correct so one question was uh, why that was returning the error message that uh command does not exist so this was explained in a way that common substitution will print to the prompt the result of the executed command and that result will be already interpreted as a command and so if you just put your your login name on the prompt then of course there is no that uh, command with that name and so basically you will get the error message that the command does not exist. Just a second, I close the room. Yep. 
back online. Uh, the other one, uh, fast found. So what I was trying to what I was trying to make you to do. So find function. Well, where where was it? Find name. So that should be already good enough to get started. Uh, the only thing that you need to substitute this search word. Like for instance, if I would like to be some kind of word, I don't know, let's say that I, uh, what kind of stuff I have here. Do we need store bean? Okay, let me find, for instance, the bash history. So now I want to I name and then I want to find something which has bash in name. That wouldn't be enough because uh, it will be looking explicitly for something which is named bash. But we are looking for something which has bash in the name. So we need to put this um, stars just to make sure that actually we are looking for something which has bash. Now that should be good enough. And we found already bash history, which is in the current directory. And we also have found the hello bash, which is somewhere down there. Okay, now we need to create a function. We have already ready to go command. We have it tested from the prompt and we are ready to put it to the functions. So let me call it uh, fast found. I open this this way and I close it this way and I put my name over here. So I also was told that this should pick up any search word, not only bash. Okay, so we can remove it from here and then we need to specify what we want. The good practice, if we actually use some specific variable over here, even if you can use this dollar one and you expect that the variable exists, we usually and the, the best practice I usually suggest, well, I'm not sure, but we, I usually suggest that you use the, you reassign this dollar one to some other variable. It's made in the way that you do not occasionally actually would try to edit this or modify and otherwise you would get the error message. So in this case, that should work perfectly. Yeah, I guess so. But uh, let me see, uh, the only error over here is that I don't want to use the quotes, single quotes. I need to use this double quotes. Why? Because I did the explanation at the very beginning of this session, double quotes uh, make the bash to actually open the variables and substitute the variables. Single quotes will just take the word as is with the dollar sign and nothing would happen. So this already is something. And let's say that I want to source it once again. And I want to see that um, type minus A, F, A, and see it's there. And if I want to try this again with a bash, see whether it works, it works. If I want to try without bash, does it work? It does work because find will find you everything, even if you provide empty uh, string. So basically, it just we're using this um, <clears throat> uh, this star to to tell to tell you that it has lots of file inside. Okay, we don't really want this kind of situation. So we really want to make sure that actually this word is not empty. What to do in this case? We can use once again a logic, a magic of this variable uh, exchange. And then what we do here is that we are supposed to actually give out either the variable itself or the error message. And so that we can say here that what was a directory or oh, search word. So sorry, we are search word is missing. 
does it work for us? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this would be already good enough for us. But one thing to remember, uh, we still don't want that this find will be executed. How to do that? And this where we come with another one thing, uh, which I didn't tell you yet, but I will tell you on the next session, but I will already use it over here just to make this uh, kind of function complete. So let's say that I will execute it like this and let's see what's going on. So source, and then if I run FF, search word is missing. So it's already completely correct. And so we have just exited the bash. So we don't really need anything over there. But then if you want to be completely sure what's going on, actually, uh, let's don't go that far and uh, let's go to the next session. And then I will do the explanation and do the modification to this uh, code already right away. So to have... To have it on the line and go in line with the traditional thing. I can put it as a replies. Okay. Here you go. Bash. So here you go. And let's make it more compact, like this. Good. So let's get back to the material. So my next step was actually touch a little bit the right directions. So I'm not going to the conditionals yet. So I wanted to tell you something about redirections because I want to touch a few other things within within these subjects. Redirections have been actually pretty much covered. I think uh, files directors command line utilities. I think they have been yeah. Redirections have been covered pretty much in the same <clears throat> in the previous ones, and then also we have it's uh, quite a lot of things cover it also uh, within this material. So that's a kind of advanced one. But uh, let me say a few words, uh, because it's important. Even if you know this, it's still important. So every time, every time when you are running some kind of any command, when you are running any script, whatever program, a lot of happens actually under the hood. And one of the things which has happened is that you are uh, getting along with your running file, several file descriptors, descriptors opened for you. Uh, some of them are reserved and even enumerated. So that's the 0, 0, 1, and 2. And they stands for the standard input, standard output, and standard uh, error output. And all of those guys, they actually can be controlled. So you can control where... Uh, by default, if you type something like echo or if you type any command and it outputs something, it goes to your standard output. And the standard output is the screen, the terminal of your terminal. So you just uh, see it on your, on your display, basically. But you can control where it goes. And one thing to do is to actually do the redirection. Uh, and you can redefine actually all of them. But... Uh, let's say that i want to do the redirection of something which i don't want to see i can use as an example pink command so pink one of the uh, uh, google dns servers what it tells me that if pink goes through that means i am online so i don't want this to be interactive i want to just one single uh <coughs> one single packet which will be sent uh, and then exited but i still don't want this one go to the go to the screen i want only the exit code and we were talking with you already the exit code even if you don't get any output of the command you can always take a look at what kind of exit code was given by that command and if it's succeeded 
then the exit code will be zero. If it's not succeeded, it will be something else than zero. One, usually one, or it could be two, it could be even two, five, six, so, six, so that's kind of exit code. So I think uh, maximum is 256, that's the maximum, but I uh, can be wrong, so not really sure. Usually from the programmer perspective, you can, by the number of this output, you can say what exactly has happened and what went wrong. Okay, but in this case, what I'm saying here, I'm using the redirection sign. This uh, says me that I want to redirect the standard output to some other place. So you can do it and redirect it to a file. And that will be part of the exercise. But you can also do something else and you can use the special device called null. On Linux, that means that everything that goes to the dev null will disappear, it will not be seen anywhere. So let's see what will happen over here. Pink is okay. And then if you see that I can actually check the status which has been returned, it's zero, so it's correct. Uh, let's emulate somehow the situation that we didn't reach the pink. So I am not, will, I will not be disconnected myself from here, but let me just come with something which does not exist and will, which will generate the error message. So in this situation, pink actually has returned the error message. It still came to the screen. And you see that actually the status, the exit code of this command was something which is non-zero, which is already from the point of view, if you want to, for instance, uh, uh, run some kind of if, or conditional statement. So this will be already good enough to say that, okay, it's if it's not succeeded, then do that and that. Okay, but we still have one other problem. If there is an error, it's still on the screen. So what we do, by default, this redirection pipe, uh, this redirection sign will uh, redirect everything which goes to the standard output but we also want to redirect everything which will go to the standard error output. So how to do that? And we can say explicitly here that please redirect the file descriptor number two, and here we put the redirection sign to the one. So what will happen over here? So from the bash point of view, both standard output and standard error output will be joined together and redirected to the standard output, which means they will go directly to dev null. What will happen here is that no error message will appear on the screen and this exit status is the only one we get because we are just requesting it explicitly. It's correct, but in the modern version of uh, so this is the most common syntax for this kind of notation, but in the modern, 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 modern version of the bash, you can also use the compact way. So you can do it the same, but uh, uh, probably the other way around. Ah, yeah, that was the problem, not this one. Yeah, so here you go. Here you actually, you... You get the output, only the exit output. And what else I wanted to introduce you, but actually not data induction, but the kind of remembering from the previous course, is that this exit status can be used with the with the logical operands. There are two operands in the bash syntax. That's the logical end and logical or. So basically end says that if the exit code of the previous command was non-zero, was zero, so if it's succeeded, then do next. And we can say that echo, we are online like this, yeah? 
let's put the quotes just to be more readable. Essentially, we are not. Uh, I mean, we are getting the error message. We are not getting the error message. We are online. And in the same way that if something went wrong, we can always say that echo, we are down. Okay, at the moment we are online, but then if something went wrong, whatever. So we will be getting the message that we are down. So this is my touch on the redirections and then this uh, logical or, uh, logical and, and logical or. You can use it within the script easily. You can use it from the command line, and this is the most uh, often used, how it's most often used on the command line, but nothing stops you from using this on the screen. Then another one thing which I was about to tell you is that actually uh, usage of the um, pipe. Pipe, this is something which stands for this one. So basically, the output of this command will be redirected from the standard output of one command to the standard input of the another command. And so let's see how it works. So we have had kind of a couple of a uh, couple of examples, like for instance, actually we have had already this disk usage. So let's try it once again. Okay. What I did. So what's happening over here is that we are redirecting everything what they've got from the disk usage command to the sort and the tricky thing that if you want to redirect also the uh, uh, error from the from the command number first you will also do it this way okay mm -hmm. maybe it's the other way around so i will yeah that's the other way around but actually, if I want to get rid of, if I want to get rid of, for instance, this message, you can do it from this uh, exactly situation. So I don't really want to get everything what comes as an error. I only want to get something which comes to the standard output. And so you can see that our output is way more clear. Even if it's harmless, it's still, if you want to make your code robust, you can do it this way. And also I have demonstrated you how to do that the other way around. And I think we are pretty much what I was thinking about. So we have eight minutes left, uh, but if you're up for the yet another one uh, exercise I was actually planning to finish right on this exercise so we can try to do it right now and then we will come back to this on uh, on Wednesday tomorrow at uh, 12 I, I'll do the explanation so let's say that the rest of the time you spent playing with the redirection and piping this exercise do as much as you want as much as you can. I'll be here probably for the next 15 minutes at least. And we will continue otherwise tomorrow at 12. And Enrico, if we want to get something like how complicated material is, that's also a good chance to do it right now. But otherwise, let's say that our last exercise for today is this one redirection and piping so try to do it that should be fairly easy but except the last one last one will probably take you some time to get to the point but it's also doable there should be no something no much of the troubles okay let's try to do this and then i will get back to the screen
we will be about three minutes late running today, but let's hope that's okay.